Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the Influential You podcast. I'm Josh D'Amigo, program faculty member for Influential You and your host for this weekly podcast. At Influential You, we teach you how to take charge of your career and amplify your professional influence. Since 2009, we've helped thousands of business owners, executives, and entrepreneurs become more influential, more rewarded, and more you. Today, we're continuing our Legends on Legends series. At Influential U, we have a group that is held in our highest regard and admiration. This group is known as our esteemed alumni. Now, esteemed alumni are those who have completed our four-year curriculum in transactional competence. The most ambitious of our esteemed alumni, or our Green Berets, if you will, study in a program known as Legends. Our Legends are often top performers in their fields and have experienced a level of satisfaction that only comes from years of deliberate practice and study. This program is led in fellowship with co-founders Kirkland Tibbles and John Patterson, and this initiative includes a wide range of strategies to advance and expand their own application of transactional competence and pave the path in the study of transactional leadership. Over the course of the next few months, we'll have special episodes of the Influential You podcast. I'll be introducing our two guests, and then getting out of the way so that you may experience the expertise and communication skills between two of our participants. If you listen closely, I believe that you'll hear a level of transactional leadership that is quite novel in day-to-day -day conversation. Today, we're welcoming John Bajant and Brandon Vale to our Legends on Legends series. John Bajant is the director of Bowman Associates and joins us from Auckland, New Zealand. John has spent over 20 years of his career in senior and general management roles and is a faculty member here at Influential U. In addition, he was also the first in New Zealand to become an Influential U consultant and has combined his business, financial, and property expertise with his Influential U education to create a unique skill set that allows a significant competitive advantage with and for his clients. Brandon Vale has over 20 years experience in managing tech products for both startup and growth stage companies and is currently in the events industry. He's focused on building tech products people love and helping companies scale. Brandon is one of our longtime participants and he first participated in our programs with Fundamentals of Transaction Program number four, which I've heard they had to mail their papers in with pigeon or sending doves or something like that. He's joining us from Chicago, Illinois, and you are going to love these two men. Please welcome John Bajan and Brandon Vale to the Influential You podcast. John, there's Brandon. There you guys are. Welcome to the Influential You podcast. I'm going to get out of your way and let you guys do what you do. Enjoy your talk. <laughs> Josh, thank you for that. <laughs> Wonderful introduction. So, so Brandon, we, we've met We've met several times at uh, annual conferences, but we actually don't know each other, do we? No, no so, not too much. <laughs> I, I, I'd actually like to rectify that. And I, I recall when we first met that I think you were doing something called or something involved with Buzz on Stage. Yep. Can, can I ask you, what was that all about and, and what was your involvement with that? Yeah, uh, it was a startup in the theater industry here in Chicago. Um, I've had a couple in the, in the theater industry here, uh, you know, and actually through start, uh, the study with Influence Ecology, the first one was at, uh, actually Buzz on Stage was at the same time. So it kind of was a, an evolution of what happened through uh, going through the mechanics and practice program. Um, had it for, I think, uh, five years. Uh, and then, you know, just iterated through it as startups normally do. And uh, we uh, raised some friends and family funding, which was an experience in itself. Um, we had just uh, uh, left uh, Trump Club um, after we sold the Nordstrom. So was on the heels of that. And so it was an exciting time. Um, not all startups make it. In fact, most of them don't. And that's, I think, the key thing to, to remember and realize um, you know, and that one, unfortunately, uh, wasn't one that was able to make it. So, um, but it was a fun time. There are over 600 theater companies in Chicago, and then we had uh, a couple theaters in St. Louis as well. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. But look, at the end of the day, if it doesn't work, 
there's still some value to be had, isn't there, in terms of the lessons learned? A ton, yeah. I mean, the the phrase that I like the most is, when's the last time you learned from success? Absolutely, yeah. And so it, it really is, each one of these is kind of built in and, and think, uh, things into my career that I've used as, you know, an employee or as another founder and, and that kind of thing. So it all goes to that. Cool. And look, uh, I'm, I'm just curious, if, if, if I may, I get a sense that you're a little bit of an entrepreneur if, if you're involved in that startup sector. So you learn something there. So how did you apply that and, and where did you apply it next? Well, uh, I mean, all of this stems back to transactionalism. So it's like whether you're using it on your own business or whether you're using it on your day job. Like I, I tend to be in tech companies, um, uh, especially here in Chicago, apartments.com, Trump Club, Outcome Health that was a healthcare tech company. Um, and then Encore is where I got into the events industry. But whether it's a startup or, or, or somebody else's company, a growth stage company, it's still coming in understanding what are the, you know, where is the company? What doing an assessment, inventory or resources? What's our goal? Like at Convention Data Services that I was just at, first thing I came in and said, okay, we're a you know, $20 million company. What's our goal? Well, it's a natural growth progression. I was like, okay, well, what if we five or 10x the company? Well, I don't even know how we would do that. Well, that's the conversation to get in. Like yeah. set an aim that, that, that it might not be achievable. And that's the, that's the start of it. And then it just becomes a transaction like anything else that we build. Absolutely. So it, all, yeah. it all builds in. And then you just start realizing, okay, when the company is at this level with this number of people or these personality types, this is how we have to move. These are the moods that we're in. These are the the things that we should be, the metrics we should be staring at. Um, and like uh, in a startup, you're not really worried about change management because things should be changing every day. <laughs> are you, you know, are you actually moving forward versus in a growth stage company, you have to, you do need to very much have your eye mostly on, on change management because you have something that works. You're trying to scale it. You don't want to break things along the way. You want to successfully make sure people are feel like they're being uh, like they're part of that transformation. So it, it's you have to have your eye on different things at different times. Uh, I find that fascinating <laughs> and a lot of fun to to be in. My, my understanding, Brandon, is that you, you have a tech bias, but it's all about people at the end of the day, isn't it? It is. Yeah. So is. has this education helped you in that regard? That has been, I would say that if you ask Kirkland or John, that is the one thing more than anything that they, that they have called out uh, on me working on any kind of startup is you're, what are you doing? If you're not building a team, you've got a hobby and your hobby that might make, might be making you money, but it's still a hobby. You're like, yeah. I, I think, and I'm 46 now, I'm about, I'll be 47 this year. And it's like, we start, I started when I was 33, you know, so at, in 2010, right when we did this, just ne this last year is when I realized that if I am doing something, I'm actually being detrimental. And I know that sounds weird, but it's just like, that is not where my value comes in. My value comes in, how do I apply my experience and my inventory of resources to help build the right team, get the experts in, get them the right tools for the job and, and just encourage them and just watch them. That's where the magic happens. It doesn't happen when I'm standing in the middle dictating like, where things go or I'm sitting here coding. Literally, it has been the, the most freeing thing over the last year and a half, but it's, it's one of the most valuable. Yeah, and, and that, I suspect, fits pretty nicely with your personality, doesn't it? It, it does. Now it does, because then I can just you know, provide direction and then guide. I think it was frustrating a lot, a lot of the time because I was trying to do too much, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but... I think you and I are of similar ilk and, and we have this, I, I guess, habit of trying to do everything ourselves. Yeah, I, yeah. I know that I used to be able to do that or not be able to. I used to try and do that, yeah. but you can't, can you? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, I, 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 
I'm, I'm, as I said, I'm curious. And Josh mentioned in the intro that uh, you were an FOT4, Fundamentals of Transaction 4. What was that like way back <laughs> then? <laughs> Uh, I, it, it's funny. I mean, he's like, well, we didn't necessarily have to mail our paper. You know, the, the carrier pigeons had gone by the wayside, but we, I do remember sitting in my, um, one bedroom apartment on the floor on a free conference call.com call with, with folks, uh, and just, and getting study papers that were, I have an OCD about grammar because I'm from Kansas. And so I really focused on, <laughs> <laughs> that kind of they were grammar uh 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 illegible not not illegible it's um you know it, it, you know editing wasn't a thing we were going after value we were learning from each other and that kind of thing um but we did mail you know we did email in um we did use you know free conference call.com and things like that i mean but it's still we made it work because the ambition was there yeah. um you know and that was you know, it, it was great. I mean, we were just trying to figure out what is this thing? We're all here to, you know, to uh, uh, achieve something in life, like see what's possible. I didn't even know beforehand, you know, before I, you know, John and I had the pleasure of working together and, and being friends before Influence Ecology started. And that's kind of how I got into it. He was writing a blog that was starting to talk about AIMS and starting to talk about how to maneuver uh how to oh. transact effectively and i'm like and then he's screw he wrote a blog uh post uh that said i'm done giving away the the milk uh, you know from <laughs> you know if you you want to know more then contact me because we're pre we're putting this into a study that that people can participate in and so i contacted him he's like here's what it is here's how much it is i couldn't even afford that it was more than i made in a month at that point um, and it was only like, I think it was only like $1,200, $1,400, something like that. I didn't have any savings as a one bedroom apartment with, you know, uh, my, you know, my partner and stuff. And it was, uh, uh, and I had a job that, that I really didn't have, uh, any aims for it. Or I didn't know what I wanted to do in my career. It was just mostly like, I know what to do. I'll help organize. I was a project manager. I'll help organize it. Let's do this. And mostly just bouncing around being, um, being a bitchy gay, <laughs> you know, it's a lot of points. <laughs> so, so aims were a little bit vague. You knew that something was missing. You needed to do something. Yeah. Didn't quite know what, but it resonated with you. Yeah. Is, is that that's, your comment? Yeah. And that's what, and that's what we did. So I, I, you know, I say, you know, I describe where I was because it's just, I remember being there, not knowing what to do and kind of, it wasn't that I was unhappy, but it was, just there, it just felt like there was more. There, there was more to be had, and how do I do that? And that's I think I think a lot of people are in the same place when we joined those first calls. We we didn't know what we didn't know, but we were there to, uh, you know, to to figure out, you know, what what else could there be? Yeah, I I, I had a similar but not the same experience that um, I had a business partner who was in. Uh, one of the fundamental programs. And she said to me, John, you've got to do this. And I trusted her. So I said, well, okay. So I actually went along to uh, a, uh, a workshop that uh, Drew Knowles uh, had. He was in town and presented that. And uh, he'll tell the story. I was, I was sitting there in the front row. I was looking intently at him. I was taking it all in. Um, and he was getting a bit worried because uh, my part, business partner, Wendy, had told him about me. And, you know, she, he, he had this impression about me. Mm -hmm. And what I was giving him was something a little bit different, you know, because I had this, you know, what he <laughs> turned out to be resting bitch face, he called it. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I, he was worried at the, at, that he hadn't got it right. He was doing something wrong. And I, I was actually upsetting him a little bit in his presentation. So I went up to him afterwards and said, I'd like to do this. I'll let you know. And this was in November. I'll let you know on the, on the I think, the 12th or 14th of January. Um, and he said, well, you could have let your face know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. But uh, it was something that 
I, it resonated with me. Yeah. Like you, it was probably more than I could afford at the time, but I knew I had to do it. And so I just bit the bullet and, and decided to, to go ahead and do it. Yeah. And to be quite honest, I, I haven't looked back since. I haven't regretted that one iota. And in fact, that investment has paid itself many times over. Completely. And that's kind of where I was you know, going to go with is that you're, you're still participating as am I. Um, and that's really one of the key things. What, what would you say is, are some of the reasons why you're, you're still participating? Um, um, it, it, it's a long answer, I'll, I'll have to say. Very much so, yeah. It, I, I, I liked what I was, was hearing, and I hadn't seen a framework that had been such a cohesive framework about how things work. And, and I'd, I'd literally said to some people, actually, if you want to know how life or business works, this is how it works. Right? So that made sense to me. But the real, the real kicker, Brandon, was uh, I attended a mid-year conference. And I didn't really know anyone there. I just thought, well, I'll, I'll go along to this. And I came away from that thinking, wow, I, I've finally met my tribe. You know, finally, there were so many people who actually thought and acted like I did. You know, for years, I've been a bit of an outlier in the way I think. And it, it was wonderful to actually have a cohort of people around you that you can rely on that supportive. And that's why I'm here. It's really for the people is why I'm here. Um, the education itself, uh, you think you know it, but you've got to keep, keep studying it to, to yeah. really embody it. Yeah, that really is. I got I started to get uh, you know touched during that just because that's that's why you know in my conversations with with John and Kirkland at the very beginning and, and what they were trying to do that's what I wanted is is it was a honestly the phrase and if I had if I had to piece it back together the phrase that we used is a group of people that set ambitious aims ambitious aims and kicked each other's asses in order to make sure that we were able to achieve them. Yeah. Like that's what we wanted to create. And then, you know, it just, we just focused on that and, you know, Kirkland had, you know, the, the study and John had the, the, what was going along with the study and then, but knew how to put together and package this. And so I'm so glad that they got back together and then he got the, the first, you know, cohorts together, but that was the, that was the goal. And so for you starting in, in FOT 31, and then today, still feeling that that that's that's and it, that's what I felt this, along the way as well. And it's just it it it's almost a proud moment just to hear you explain it like that because that's what we all had in mind as well, and why I why I wanted to participate and still do. Well, well I think those that continue to participate actually feel that way, and I, and I, I suspect it doesn't matter who you talk to. Brennan, you, you, you've made a comment previously. It continues to change my perspective on life, success, and happiness. Can you elaborate on that? So I think where, you know, I said that, you know, when I first started, I didn't even know how that you could put aims together and, and, and then, uh, you know, build a transaction or put things in place in the environment and, and, you know, in your life to, to achieve them. I didn't even know that any of that was possible. So you do that once and you're like, wow, okay, what's next? And then you do it again. And it's like, okay, cool. And then it's not just business. I think you, you just said it really well, where it's, it's, you want to know how, how business and life works. Like this is it. And so it wasn't just, business. It was my, it was my relationship, my family, um, how I relate to money, how I relate to where we live, um, my neighbors, relationships, uh, at work. How do I, how, how, uh, friendly do I be with people at work? Um, like, uh, versus, uh, just focusing on my career and that kind of thing. And it just gets to the point where you, you, I set, aims and achieve them and then set aims and achieve them. And at some point my life just started getting, getting to be surreal. And I was just like, I just, I don't really comprehend it. 
<laughs> at a lot of times. I just one, I would say, am incredibly lucky, but but also, you know, it, it's it's just the fact that you just keep setting aims and achieving them, and the bigger they are, the bigger the change it's going to be. And so it, it just that's really just been the experience where it just continually changes my perspective on life and how to relate to things. I constantly am getting into new situations, you know, being, you know, the, the CTO, chief technology, chief technology officer for, for uh, CDS that I was just at. Um, that's at a level of interacting with people and transacting uh, that I've never been. And it's just, I just set an aim it's like got there and then it opens up a whole new world of learning and then you set new aims and it's just a continuous cycle. It's that um, it's that framework, but also the accurate thinking that you learn to develop. That you, you've got a structure that you can put that accurate thinking into, and that gives you one hell of an advantage, doesn't it? It does. It does it, to the point where, uh, and this is kind of where I am with like Peter Burkraft and like Joanna and and. Um, and others, you know, that, that I've been friends with, like, not, I mean, Peter was the best man at my wedding last year. So it's like, we, these are lifelong friends that we're able yep. to, to form through this. Um, and it, 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 to the point where we're, we're more looking at maintenance in a lot of realms now and never did, thought before 50, you know, that I'd be able to get there and, and that kind of thing, just because, you know, from where I, where I started. So it's, you know, uh, it's, it's a privilege in, in, in that sense, but it doesn't, I'm nowhere near done. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm working on a, a startup in the events industry right now uh, and, and talking with another, uh, you know, a group of, of folks that started a, an events company in, a, in my dining room uh, about being the chief digital officer there, but I was somewhere else and it didn't work. So we're, you know, so always things going on, but in, it's never over. Um, but it's, it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's, uh, uh, always changing and sh and, and shifting your perspective. But life's like that, isn't it? <laughs> it and, is. and if you have the skill set to recognize that. And good and bad. And, and, good and, and, bad and, and then modify, validate, modify, call it what you like. Exactly. Um, as I said, it's a distinct advantage on for many people. And, and that's one of the things that I love is that you know, if you can put that into practice, life seems to happen a lot easier and a lot quicker, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It very quickly. So, and we're working. So we're working on kids now. Uh, but you know, surrogate, and you know, we'd like to have two, and 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 figuring that out. So I mean, all these, it's never done. It's just some things. You know, it depends on how we uh, set our satisfaction level in those different you know conditions of life. You 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 talk about um, success as being preparation, opportunity, and luck. So what what do you mean by that? I don't think I came up with that, but I think uh, I I think that this was I think I I remember us talking about it at a conference, um, you know, with with Kirkland John, it, it's it's uh, and others, but it. it yeah, that su success is actually defined as uh, preparation, uh, opportunity, and luck. <laughs> um, fortuitous transaction cycles, I think, is what we called it uh, when we first uh, came up with it. I'm, um, so just preparation, I think, is just study. It's, it's a constant inquiry. Um, and not that something is, is wrong or you always have to set something, you set a new aim, but it's, it's really that... It, um, uh, that you're you're in a you know a constant inquiry and, or a constant study. Uh, what are you looking at? You should be you know paying attention to relationships or or things like that. So uh, the preparation is there in order to take advantage when an opportunity presents itself. And then there's you know always just a little bit of luck at least. You know, like the right person was there or the right connection like from a year ago or the right conversation. There are things right now that happen pretty much within the same week that some one big door closes and another big door opens. And I was, Kirkland and I were just talking when he was here about this opportunity and I didn't know what to do. And the next morning, um, you know, something, uh, one of the up two options closed, which cleared the path for 
the what I was hoping was the better option. And that I, that I think the last three three things that were big happened that way. It's just I, you know, the timing, and I say it's a little bit of luck, but the preparation and opportunity presents itself. You can take advantage of it. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know that I ascribe too much to luck. Uh, I say it, I say it, a little. <laughs> But Did it's you know, around knowing your aims yeah. and moving transactionally, yeah. building your identity. Um, you know, for, for me, in my property days, I never had to go out and find opportunities. After a while, they started coming to me. Now, was that luck? No, it, it might have been, but I think it's more a function of the, the connections you make, people understand what you do, how you can do it, the reputation you have. Um, yeah, so, yeah. all right, can I shift gear a little bit? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm interested in your, um, your initiative. You know, as um, Josh said, we're in the Legends Initiative, which means we have an initiative. Yeah. And yours, I believe, is brand on, and I, I love the play on words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want, that's good. Yeah, I wanted to get to yours as well, because I've always been fascinated about um, genealogy. So uh, I've done quite a bit in my, my family as well. But um, yeah, so I, it's interesting. I mean, I would say that I'm, I'm more of a, an extroverted introvert. <laughs> um, so I can be outgoing, I can, I can uh, get up and, and lead and I can lead a, you know, 50 person workshop or whatever and, and all these things. But, uh, I, I really, um, like, uh, staying to myself or with my, with my close, uh, friends. Uh, I've also done the same with my career. I, I really delve deeply into whatever company I'm working with, whether it's a startup or whether I'm an employee. Um, and in that sense, I've never really focused on creating a public brand for myself. Right. Um, I'm probably one of the last, especially in the realm of LinkedIn and, and Twitter and all the things like I just I really haven't found it important in what I've been up to and doing because I've been able to maneuver and transact uh, successfully personally, not as a back to what we were talking about just before yeah. in terms of, you know, doing the preparation you don't need a big brand if you've got that connection with people. Exactly. I, I, I get that. But things are changing for you. Are they, are they that you, you need a, a public persona? Yeah. And, you know, and I look at what's next for me. And as I consider that, you know, I, I, I would like to continue to help lead um, uh, one or a few companies or advise or figuring out, is that a consulting relationship? Is it a board position? where I can advise, you know, in, in tech transformation and product development and, and, and that kind of thing. Um, you know, what, it, what is that kind of role that is ideal or that lifestyle that, that is ideal that, um, uh, you know, those roles would, would play into that, uh, that I'm looking for. Uh, as I consider and look at other inspir inspiration, uh, uh, in LinkedIn or, or in the industry, I'm in the events industry. I, I really want to stay. I love the events industry. Um, it's, it's very much like theater. <laughs> um, but, uh, I really want to make a difference there. And so as I look at, uh, inspiration, you know, and their profiles and things like that, um, they do have a very public, uh, persona, like they're, uh, thought leaders. They are, um, you know, uh, public speakers, you know, that kind of thing. So I think it does lend credibility, credibility, not just from a resume standpoint, but from a personality standpoint, I, what it's like to work with you. Uh, this is one of the first, you know, public things that I've done. Uh, uh, so, but it's, uh, you know, it, it's, it's part of the game, you know, in, in achieving this next level uh, of life. So that's what I'm going to, in an inquiry about, you know, what can be done, what practices, what strategies could be used. Well, in, you know, you've got a lot of help in the psychology, don't you? Yeah, that's... There's a lot of expertise in that particular area. Yeah. You just have to ask. I've, I've actually seen uh, you posting quite a bit, um, you know, in LinkedIn and, and things like that. So 
Yeah, well, it's it's just part of a strategy, and um, yeah, like I, I've had people come to me and say, "Hey, listen, I like what you you're doing. Is there an opportunity we might be able to collaborate together?" Yeah. So it, so it has it's had its payoff. How, how do you, uh, if I if I may, like how do you decide um, uh, what to post, how to post? Like how do you know what the message is that you're running to put out? Um, and make those decisions because you, you post almost daily now, I think. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm doing it frequently and that's purposely. Um, I started out, I got some help and um, you will have heard of the attention seeker. Uh, so I engaged with Stanley Henry there and they helped me do that thinking around, well, who am I? What have I got to say? And, and, they literally helped pull it all together. But after a while, I thought, well, no, I can do this myself. Uh, and I'll let you into a little secret. You remember at conference uh, a couple of years ago, we got handed a little wee box of um, little cards about all the legs. Yeah. So earlier this year, I looked at those, and there were over 100 of them. And so each one of those is a topic. Hmm. And then I, so I just, what, what, what's coming out today? Okay, that's what I'm writing about. Interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, because you're, you know, being, being part of Influential You, it's still going to, it's still new for me to say that it influence ecology for a long time for me, but uh, I love, I love the new name. Um, but, uh, but yeah, having the, that there as characteristics about what the, what the offer is that you're representing in the marketplace. That's, you know, th that's kind of where I've been and, and, and uh, getting more comfortable about what do I want to say? Cause I have a innate thing inside of me where it's, I learned everything. I didn't necessarily go to a popular school and have an, I don't have an MBA and all this. I did all this. Ex I went the experience route. So it's, you know, I, I'm going to suggest that, uh, the education that you've had is probably far more valuable than some of those other, uh, institutions yeah. and your experiences, uh, you've got a lot to say. Yeah. When, especially, especially with, with, you know, influential you. Um, so, um, so I do want to, I do want to jump over to your, to your initiative, the genealogy part, because it's always been fat is fascination of mine. Um, so what, what about it is, is special and what, how did that, how did that come to be for you and, and, and that? Well, my father, God bless his soul, um, spent years, literally years, and back in those days, um, hundreds of that, well, not hundreds, hundreds of pounds, which was a lot of money in those days, uh, researching where we came from. And he'd write to um, churches in England and, and get records and everything like that. And he did pretty well. And this was in pre-internet days, so, you know, there nothing you could do there. Yeah. But after he died, I, uh, I thought, well, I've got all this information, so I actually started putting it into a, uh, a genealogy um, program. And that was fine, And but I've been threatening, look, I, I've got the family tree, but I don't know much about the people. So I've been threatening for quite some time to find out and write about you know, the people, so I could build a picture of where have I come from. Hmm. And, and so that's that's what prompted um, this initiative. In fact, it was actually a conversation that Ross Clennett uh, had on one of our um, Legends calls, talking about um, he had photos and stories uh, about his sister who, who died at an early age that he had for his niece and nephew. And that he was going to do something about that. And I thought, actually, it's time for me to do something. So that's what really got me going on this. Um, but I've been amazed that as soon as I took that decision, I actually opened up my genealogy um, software program and I actually signed up to get the full blown version. Hmm. And, uh, you know, immediately I started tracing further and further back. So, you know, I, I've gone back 11 generations, which is quite amazing uh, from, from my perspective. Have you, 
there was a TV show uh, on a streaming service. I don't remember. And it was somebody that was doing genealogy with celebrities and what they would do. They would go, they would find something, they'd start and they'd actually go visit. Yeah. Have you done something like that? I, no, I mean, that, that program was Who Do You Think You Are? Uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. But it, that's been a little bit of an inspiration to, okay. to well, it's, okay, they are the people, but what's the story behind those people? Exactly. What was going on in their lives? What's yeah. happening? Uh, because I'm not just me. I'm, I'm a product of all that's gone before me. Exactly. And... Yes, my environment's shaping me, but that's part of my, you know, pre-environment, if you like, that's also shaped me. Let yeah. me understand about that. So it's about trying to understand the environment that my forebears actually existed in and how that impacted. That's that's great. There's because there's biology that fits into that as well. I could, you know, what, you know, how you might uh, approach how how you. Uh, 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 you know, medications you might be on or, or things like that. So, I mean, it all ties into your, your life and lifestyle and the background and where it's going. That's very cool. For, for instance, I've recently just found out that I've actually got distant relations in Ukraine, in Poland, that I didn't even know about. That's fantastic. So, there you go. Wow. Those, are, those are great countries to visit too. So when you get to that point, if you if you do... <laughs> well, if we're not carefully, the two of you guys are going to go together because you're becoming such good friends over a course of 35 minutes. Um, I'd love to, first off, thank you both for participating. This has really been fun to watch. Everything from feeling really lucky that I know the two of you, uh, to which maybe John Bajant doesn't necessarily agree with that, uh, or maybe just the you know concept of kind of hearing more about what you're doing with your genealogy. But I'd love to hear the two of you kind of just talk really briefly, maybe for a minute apiece, What's it like to be on something like this and co-create a podcast episode with someone that you barely know? And I guess, John Bajan, I'll go with you first. Um, this has been a blast. Um, I feel as though, as you said, I've got to know Brandon. Um, but I think it's easy because we have some commonality. Okay. We've had an education. We've got a language. I don't really mean it in too negative a context, but we've, we've got a basis that we can communicate with that makes it easy for us to, to communicate. Yeah. It's not so much a blind date when you already have a lot of shared characteristics, <laughs> you know, because again, just like I said, we're ambitious individuals, you know, looking to see, you know, what else is next. And so if you, when you have that as a starting point, it's, it's easy to start having a dialogue about what's possible or why you're what you're up to. So yeah. my if, if I may say, those characteristics of having that commonality, when you're in business with people who have got the same, it's easy. Yeah, it really yeah. is. And I think that's that's a really good place to put a pin in that. Also, uh, make sure that Michael Teehe, you grab that because that was the best thing, Brandon. I mean, Brandon, that was the quote of the day. I'm going to take that with me. So good. Thank you both for being on. And I look forward to unpacking this with you in the Legends program in a couple of weeks. We'll see you guys very soon. All right. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate it. See ya. Now, if you'd like to know more about us, go to InfluentialU.Global and explore our courses, consulting, and conferences. We offer a four-year curriculum for those seeking an advanced experience. However, if you're brand new to Influential U, we recommend you start with Thrive. It's our self-guided training. Thrive is a self-guided program that lets you learn at your own pace. Thrive members enjoy weekly live e-coaching sessions and an ever-expanding library of exclusive video lessons with our faculty, thought leaders, and industry experts. You'll get proven proprietary tools to accurately assess your career and develop a realistic strategy to achieve your aims faster. Your membership also includes chat access to faculty, plus discounts to our transformative conferences. Sign up today and use promo code 20 off. That's 20OFF for a 20% discount on the monthly subscription. That coupon code, once again, is 20OFF. Thank you for listening to today. Each week, we stream live at 2 p.m. Pacific on our website, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube, so you can easily share this podcast with others. You can also subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or any place that you get quality podcasts. 
Check out our show notes for links to connect with our guests, plus links to websites, books, or special downloads we talked about on today's episode. This podcast is made possible by the Influential Youth staff, faculty, and members all around the world. With a special thanks to our executive producer, Tyson Crandall, our in-studio producer, Michael Teehee, with contributions from John Patterson, Joey Anderley, Daryl Anderley, Paul West, Liz Smiley, and a special thanks to the two best friends, John Bajant and Brandon Vale. I hope you guys have a great trip uh, all across Europe together. The Influence You podcast is produced by Influence Ecology LLC in Ventura, California. This episode was recorded on April 19th, 2023. The podcast theme is by Chris Standring, entitled Fast Train to Everywhere. And if you haven't yet offered a rating or review, I ask that you take a moment, go to iTunes or your podcast app, and let us know what you think. This helps us more than you know. And we'll see you next time on the Influential You podcast.